In case you have seen a few lake freighters with elongated bulges on the lower hull and wondered, what's that all about? Here's the answer. In maritime jargon, when someone takes a vessel's hull and widens it beyond its original width, it is called bustling. This method was often used back in the stern wheel riverboat days. For example, a bustle would be added to the aft hull to prevent floating objects such as tree branches from following the paddle wheel. On the Great Lakes, often wooden steam barges or lumber hookers that were being rebuilt for one reason or another would be bustled to give them more cargo capacity. Bustling a boat gives the hull greater buoyancy. This allows the vessel to carry slightly greater cargoes while drawing the same depth of water. A good example was the wooden lumber hooker Three Brothers. Constructed at Milwaukee at the peak of the lumber boom in 1888 as the steamer May Durr, the boat was specifically designed to haul lumber. In 1902 she was purchased by James White at the lumber town of Tonawanda, New York. By that time her earning potential had diminished and her new owner elected to bustle the vessel. He wanted a lumber boat that could haul one million board feet of lumber in a single trip. Entering the dry dock at Manitowoc, Wisconsin on March 1, 1903, her original hull was adapted by adding planking over the old hull with a little under four feet of space in between. To start the operation, first the steamer's bulwarks were stripped down to the spar deck. Next, her spar deck was extended about three and a half feet on each side. Then 14 by 4 inch shelf pieces were installed. Additionally, every other frame had a filling chalk installed. Next, 10 by 10 white oak timbers were hewn into the desired curve of the bustle. Then 4 inch planking was installed to give the boat a new external hull. The hewn timbers were then secured by a series of 7 8 inch iron bolts at the turn of the bilge and fastened at every one of her original ribs. At her spar deck, the upper end of each of the standing timbers was then secured by way of 1 and 1 half inch diameter iron tie rods that were tightened with a turnbuckle. The entire operation took just 20 days. Overall the bustle increased the vessel's beam by 4 feet on each side, making a total of 8 feet. The cost of this bustling was said to be about $10,000. After recaulking and repainting, the vessel was also renamed. She returned to service as Three Brothers and ran at a good profit until 1911 when she was wrecked in a storm on Lake Michigan. In modern times, the monster of profitability again raised its head. By 1995, two Canadian firms took a good look at their lake boat fleets. A very few vessels looked as if their working life could be greatly extended by good old-fashioned bustling. The first to be chosen was the Algoma Central Railway Corporation's 730-foot straight-decker Algoville. Launched as the Centiville in 1967, she was the first Seaway-class freighter constructed on the Great Lakes with all accommodations aft. Algoma acquired her in mid-1994 and estimated that the cost would be about $6.5 million to bustle her. 
Algoville went into Port Weller, Ontario's dry dock in May of 1996. Her bustling would become the standard for that era. Two steel side tanks would be added to her bilge area, running the length of her cargo hold. Unlike the three brothers, these bustles would clearly stand out. The two tanks together added three feet to her overall beam. This made her the widest canal class freighter on the Great Lakes. She left Port Weller on October 28, 1996, and after brief sea trials, cleared for Thunder Bay on the 30th. Today she operates as the Tim S. Duel. With the success of Algoville, Canada Steamship Lines took notice. Their 730-footer, the self-unloader Tadasac, went into Port Weller's shipyard on December 15, 2000 for bustling. Hers would be the same as the Algoville. Plus, she would have her conveyor changed to a single belt system. On March 3rd, 2001, the boat was finished with her new bustle and also painted gray to indicate her toil in the cement clinker trade. Eventually, she would go back to the standard colors of Canada Steamship Lines. The cost of her bustle was said to be $20 million. And apparently, the folks at Port Weller had this bustling chore down to a science by now. Where the Algoville had taken five months of work to do the bustling, the Tadasac took just about two months. Next, over the winter of 2001-2002, Algoma's self-unloader Canadian Century went in for bustling. Although bad weather slowed the winter work and she emerged with the same bustle as Algoville and Tadasac, but it took until May 20th, 2002, she went right back to work, but under a new name, John D. Leach. The final Laker in this little flurry of bustling was the Atlantic Huron of Canada Steamship Lines. She was a big self-unloader that was intended to run on the lakes as well as on salt water. She came out of the Port Weller shipyard fully bustled on May 4, 2003. As of right now, there is no telling exactly how long the bustling has extended the life of these four freighters, because they are all still running in service more than two decades after they were bustled. But when you see them, you can now tell everybody what those funny things on their hulls are all about. It's called bustling.